I just finished replacing the two multi-suction twist lock electrolytic caps. Total of six electrolytics in all. Several were in the vertical circuit, both in the oscillator and in the output amp, so I would suspect that it'll have some effect on the vertical, especially since those were the leakiest ones I tested. So it still powers up, that's always a good sign, and yeah, like I suspected, the vertical's nuts now, hopefully. Not right, good. It's required adjusting the vertical hold. Oh, and I don't recall if earlier I mentioned that there was one cap I forgot to replace on my first pass-through. One uh, paper cap, and that was on the horizontal uh, sink circuitry. Well, now that I've replaced it, I have much better horizontal sink. Before... This was a very touchy control, now I can rotate it quite a bit without losing horizontal sync. Right. Uh, so the vertical sync was off, I just had to tweak it and I got locked back. I think the picture might be slightly higher now than it was before too. Which wouldn't surprise me because one of those caps I replaced was uh, on the vertical output tube. And if it was leaky, it would have uh, decreased the gain, I would imagine. I think I need to make a little bit of more adjustments to it. Decrease the height a little bit maybe and the centering's not quite right, but otherwise I think I'll stick a fork in this one and call it done. There's one thing I keep forgetting to mention on these chassis that's worth checking for is this. To hold the CRT down they use this heavy cloth, probably canvas strap. And it's clamped by a piece of metal and two screws. So held on at this end, wraps around, and then at the other end. Well what often happens is moisture gets absorbed by this cloth that's trapped between these pieces of steel rust this out. This was really really bad. I've had rust stripper going on this for a couple days now. It's very heavily pitted but I've almost got all the rust off. Once I do I'll put some uh, Rust-Oleum um, well this stuff Rusty Metal Primer. There's actually fish oil in this. Helps uh, seal off the metal from any moisture and further corrosion. You can see underneath here the fibers were actually embedded in the rusty metal. Kind of had to tear it when I got it off. It's still strong enough to reuse, otherwise I've got some spare straps or I could always cut a new one, I suppose. In fact, I've got a spare one right up here. So that's all that holds these down, it's a piece of cloth around here. Otherwise, they're uh, fairly loose. Of course, normally they're sitting upright, so all the weight just goes down onto the rubber pads underneath. But uh, if you're going to be carrying one of these sets around or tipping it on its side to work on it, make sure that the CRT is secured or it could very well snap off the neck. I've been working on putting the set all back together. So here's the lower chassis. I took the board that it's mounted on and sprayed it with some shellac to seal it and remounted the chassis to the board and the board to the cabinet put the upper chassis in hooked up the cord which uh, is a bit longer than I expected but this is the original power supply that came with this cabinet so I guess they just gave you that much slack it's a little hook they give you here to hold it but still seems a lot longer than it needs to be 
All right, and then I uh, put the upper chassis in, as I said, and I put the high voltage cage on for the first time. And uh, the cord that came with this is actually in uh, okay condition, not great. It seems a little bit, uh, well, I wouldn't say frayed, but a little loose up there. But it's working all right, obviously, because I got the set turned on. Now, as far as that part of it goes, so I'm going to my cable system. So here's my little cable box and the output of this I have a splitter on so I can have a good of my color TV and to whatever set that I'm currently testing. But now here's where things get a little interesting. Notice the picture is actually too narrow. Great sound though. So all this time that I was fighting with too much width, now I actually don't have enough. <laughs> However, there is a width adjustment um, inside the high voltage cage. But what I find curious is that, I just had this up on a bench not too long ago, and I you know, just recorded the last segment, and the set was running, and the picture seemed a lot wider than this. So I'm curious, is the picture skinnier now? because I put the high voltage cover back on the cage, does that affect the flyback and that circuitry in some way to make the width narrower? Or did something change subtly when I moved it from the workbench over into the cabinet? It seems unlikely it's because I'm using a different signal source, as it should be conforming to the NTSC specs. So, uh, I don't know, I find that all very puzzling. So the quickest thing to check, of course, I'll just pop the high voltage cover off and plug in a cheater cord and see if that has any effect on the width. Here's what that high voltage cage cover looks like. So, big piece of metal. I heard it was more to protect people from poking their fingers in there to provide any kind of shielding. And I'd never heard about it having an effect on the actual functioning of the circuitry. And there's the opening they give you to insert a tool to adjust the width. Well, let's power it up and see if that had any difference on the width. Won't be. Well, no, I was going to say the picture is wider, but no, it's set warmed up. It is skinnier. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it really was this narrow on the workbench, but I swear, I swear it was wider than this, because the picture tube goes over to about here on this side, and about over to here. Anyways. So I can also see the picture is down a little bit too low. I think I need to shrink the height a little bit. Remember I said when after I finished recapping it that the height seemed to be... Uh, Increased. I haven't uh, tweaked that yet. Just to make sure it couldn't be the cable signal versus the converter box. Got the converter box hooked back up to the same channel as I was getting on cable. And same issue, this picture's too narrow. So, kind of amusing that after all the trouble I went through initially with the picture being too wide, no, it's too skinny. Well, can simply use a tool like this, same like for an alignment and adjust the width coil on the back. Hopefully. Get a little bit of picture. Getting there. Getting there. Actually got it backed out quite far. A little overkill when I was making the picture narrow. Let's see how's that. It's not bad. I'm not sure if that darkness on this side is just because of the programming or if that's so the picture's not wide enough. So it needs to go off a little bit. 
It's going to get a little bit wider, but I think it's also a little off center. It's getting late now, so I'll pick up on this tomorrow. Also, I want to show you this cabinet better in daylight to remind you just how miserable it is and how much work it's going to take to get looking presentable. Here it is the following morning. It's a nice sunny day, so you can get a better look at the cabinet and you can see just how bad the damage is. I think I showed this in more detail when I first got this set. Uh, but here's just a, a reminder of uh, <laughs> the condition it's in. Uh, so, the usual veneer separation, some chipping out along the bottom. Uh, I suppose that could be glued down. Uh, too horrible but it gets worse in other areas for example there's a chunk missing here so sure I can slice this off and replace a strip much better than just patching this in although that could be done too but since I've got some uh, vintage mahogany veneer on hand that I salvaged from another set in similar condition that I was just too far gone and I, I scrapped it out it was a, a Motorola set I peeled off all the veneer I could, and it's very similar looking, so you know, aged and and similar grain and all that. So that will be all right. Front would simply be stripped and refinished. Not a big deal. I mean, that, that's that's the main thing is that the front isn't bad. It's so one little chip there that can be patched in, no problem. Grill cloths, all right. And uh, joints are fairly tight in the front. I'm open a little bit there. But another issue is that the feet are fairly rotted. This thing clearly got wet at some point. And you can see here that you know, it's actually like the wood's been eaten away a bit. It's not so easy to replace because the feet are not just simply blocks of wood. They actually go, they're part of the frame. It's like a piece of wood that runs up all down through here. I suppose I could cut it off flush and glue a new block. That might be the easiest thing. Otherwise, it'd be a matter of tearing down the cabinet. Uh, the back feet aren't so bad. I think that is just literally a separate block of wood. And this one's pretty far rotted out, too. It's like half an inch just gone from the bottom. So this thing's actually not level this foot shorter than that one. So if I can just knock this off. Well, or knock off this one, too. And just put uh, uh, new blocks of wood. I bought some stock recently that I think is the right size. I'll just I'll get it right now and check. Let's see. No, not quite. Not quite. I think this was one and a half. And this is probably two inches square. Yeah, no big deal. I'll go back to the store and see if they've got any two inch by two. Uh, stock is poplar. Seems to be the standard hardwood that's available these days. Unless I want to splurge and get something like oak. I'm not sure what the original wood would have been. And it's reddish. It could be all mahogany, I suppose. Back then it was far more plentiful than it is now. Um, now you can see, better look at the damage. So, yeah, the veneer's peeling, but the secondary plywood layer is also a bit warped. And this side's even worse with the splitting and, and damage. It's even the inner frame piece. Now, if this was a really valuable set, and I really <laughs> had the woodworking tools, oh, maybe I would bust the cabinet apart. It's held together by glue and these little quick fasteners here. You bust that out, knock the whole side off. Maybe salvage these pieces or rip new ones. Get some new birch quality plywood. Put on new veneer, but I'm not doing that today. I'm not doing it anytime soon. Maybe down the road. So for now, I'm just gonna you know do no damage and just maybe clean up the feet a little and glue down some loose veneer. And you know if I hang on to this set indefinitely, well you know whenever uh, maybe I've got a real workshop, I'll do more extensive repairs. And may maybe later this year, um, assuming I can patch it up fairly reasonably well, I'll. Uh, Maybe strip it and refinish it. But in the meantime, it's not that bad. 
uh, on the front around the screen. You can actually still see the old decals fairly well. I can put some Howard's Restore finish on this and uh, make it pop a little bit better and clean up the knobs, of course. I've been making some final tweaks with the set inside the cabinet and the signal generator hooked up to it. And that's as good as I can make it. Some slight distortion in the upper right hand corner. Kind of an interaction of the focus coil and the ion trap and the yoke and just the nature of these sets. Overall it's not bad. See when I adjust the focus, kind of twist the picture a bit. But all in all, that's not bad. And uh, something else I uh, noticed was that when I checked the bandwidth again, it's actually better now than it was when I had it on the workbench. I didn't uh, check the bandwidth since I replaced those last few electrolytics, so that might have improved things. So this bar always looks odd on my sets. It seems I think that's the 3.58 megahertz or 3.5 megahertz. But beyond that, here's four and 4.5. And uh, you, know, you need to actually distinguish lines way out here at 4.5 megahertz and certainly at 4. Why there's a drop out of 3.5, I'm not really sure, but that's, that's pretty darn good. So, one last thing I'll do is uh, fire up a signal once again, take a last look at the sub playing. Living dangerously. When they hurt others, I go to work, I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Quite nice, except for one little consequence of having good bandwidth on a TV of this vintage is that the color info comes through into the video and it shows up as little dots. That's the color burst and color info, which goes from like 3.5 megahertz and up. So it's just kind of an angle, angular pattern there of mosaic of dots. Otherwise, it's just fine. Now, one way to get rid of those dots is if you have a device that has component video output, which I just happen to have up here. It's an older DVD player with component outputs. Right there. So, this has RGB outputs in addition to the standard composite output. So that's composite, but I also have blue, red, green. Now if you look up how RGB works, you find out that our eye is most sensitive to green. So that's where most of the info is. And if you just take the green info and pick it off and feed that into the set, you get a really nice crisp picture with none of that uh, chroma dot issue. So I've, I took the green and the left and right audio into this RF modulator. I'll hook the TV up to that and let's see what difference it makes. The last time I did this, I showed the intro to uh, an anime series off of DVD and YouTube flagged it and blocked it. So <laughs> see if I have better luck this time. I'll, Let's try a section of Ed Wood. I'm trying not to show too much of it to, so I don't automatically trigger their alerts. What news you couldn't tell me on the phone again? Well, I started thinking about what you're saying, about how your movies need to make a profit. Now, what is the one thing, if you put it in a movie, it'll be successful? Tits. No, better than that. A star. Hey, you must have me confused with David Selznick. Excuse me. 
Can I get everyone's attention, please? Could you All get All right, them? so if you take a close look, you see that I I've don't have those chromatics. Everybody, we're about to embark on quite a journey. Four days of hard work. But when it's over... But now i got a different we'll issue, which is the copy protection mechanism that I believe kicking in. So I've got these lines through here, which are not quite the same as retrace lines. These are, I believe, macro vision to foil you from trying to like, record this on a VCR. Well, I think there are circuit tricks you can use to get rid of that. Here's a different source of programming that does not have any copy protection, so none of those lines. But again, no chromodots. If you don't have something with RGB outputs, uh, if it has S video, I believe you can do the same trick. Um, just try to do a little Google search on S video, chroma dots. I think you'll find some info on how to really achieve right. that. What, another young man? It's the same one. It's been the same one for three months. Oh, forgive me, how I How do you do? <laughs> now take a good look at him, Dad. Try to remember him because so that just leaves the cabinet as I showed you earlier. I went to my local lumber supplier and they didn't have uh, feet of the right dimensions. It turns out these are two and a half square and they're actually made up of two pieces of wood glued together so I guess two two and a half by one and a quarter glued together so I'll hunt around I'll find something eventually and uh, I do have the original back for this set a couple of the corners are chewed off so I think I'll try patching something in there so here's how it goes on the back so it doesn't cover the whole thing just the top portion uh, like so and there are cutouts for the antenna terminal and the width control, which I find a little odd because uh, I don't know how often you would need to adjust the width. That's <laughs> not something that I ever touch up once I get the set squared away. That's pretty well it. So it doesn't uh, cover up the lower chassis. I guess you can get it all the controls. Rather than have a longer back and cut holes in it, they just have a short back. Alright, that's going to be it for this set, and I'll we'll quickly jump back to the 3812 in an upcoming video and finish that guy off. And I think that'll be it for Admirals for at least a little while. Hope you enjoyed this look at restoring an Admiral 30A15.